Clubhouse Gibraltar continues to operate from a ramshackle vault in Wellington Front, with no adequate plumbing, no toilets, and surrounded by a building site. They've had to temporarily scrap their charity shop, meaning that 50% of their income from this source has been lost. And yet, attendance is up. There are 110 members now compared to 64 two years ago. And they're staying at the club for longer hours. This is an incredible achievement for an organization that depends entirely on volunteers working for each other. They stress that everyone has skills which can contribute to the running of the service. And every one of those skills is valuable. The people, when they come, they feel welcomed. And that's very important um, because you traditionally people who have undergone mental health problems or mental illness feel um, maybe that people will not understand them, they feel self-conscious, they think everybody's staring, maybe they're not up to uh, getting themselves you know, as well presented as they would in the past. And you know, typically a person might say, oh, what's wrong with you today? Whereas in Clubhouse, we see the person and they're welcomed first. Anything else comes later, any participation is a bonus, so they feel at ease. And therefore, um, if they're not afraid to come, even if they're not, uh, if they feel a little bit under, they know that at least they'll get some encouragement, some support, some understanding, so that they can be themselves and move on from where they're at, which is very important that there's a place you can come and you don't have to put your mask on and pretend that all is well, which is a strain in itself. Uh, talking about those new premises, I, I sense from your members at this meeting a little bit of anxiety regarding the current situation uh, and, uh, and you yourself have highlighted uh, the lack of progress regarding premises. So what can you see happening over the next few weeks and months and what would you like to see? Well, uh, I think it's more anxiety, a little bit of exasperation because much as one doesn't like to focus on the negative things because fortunately we have a good team and a good um, human environment which surpasses the, the physical um, environment. So I would like to put people off by saying, oh gosh, it's a dump. But, you know, I think we deserve more. We're doing a lot. We're trying to get people back into society. So, you know, let's uh, provide the, the facilities that, that are needed and well deserved. The service isn't just valuable to the members, it's a contribution to society itself. The club costs just £300 a day to run. And it estimates this is half of what it costs to run a single bed at Ocean Views. It gets a grant from government, but it's almost entirely self-funding. Through events, donors and flag days. The launch of the annual report saw a number of moving testimonials from people who have found solace and inspiration. Among these was a service user, Tracy Spiteri, who spoke about her transition to a point where she is now a board member of Clubhouse Gibraltar and has even found part-time employment. What happens when you get to that point in your life as well, Sancho, when you sort of think, you know, I'm a 40-year-old person, I feel like giving up on myself, you know, have I actually got it? It's never too late. Especially with the support of everyone around you, the members and the staff, you think to yourself, oh, I haven't lost it. Yeah, maybe I was just a bit rusty, no? So you have to sort of like never lose faith in yourself, I suppose. And here, you know, you're prompted with like, yeah, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. And then you start being better to realize, you know, hey, you know, I can do it. In the next year, Clubhouse has three main ambitions. To finally resolve its premises situation, increase its fundraising and recruit extra staff.